Hi, welcome to the ambient iPad. Let's make some music. I'm going to finish up my journey through the Mellotron M300 sounds. For this improv, I'm going to use strings B, high and low. I'll also set up a soundscape using the Gauss Looper and add in some percussion from Brambos' Hammerhead. I'm still experimenting with some different camera angles here. Please let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, if you prefer the old style where it was just kind of uh, the camera focused on the keyboard and the iPad or something different, I'll probably do some picture in picture with this one as well, so I'd love to hear uh, your preferences and your comments. The signal chain is the Mellotron M4000D Mini. Its master mono analog output goes into a Focusrite Scarlett 18i8 interface. That communicates back and forth with the iPad Pro through a USB-C hub that also lets me power the iPad Pro at the same time. So in the last jam, I used strings A high and strings A low. In this one, I'll use strings B high and strings B low, and I'll compare them. Let's open up uh, Mixbox. I'm using this as a multi-effects for the Mellotron. want to keep the, and turn, keep the effects off uh, so I can sample the unaffected sounds. So here's strings B high, no effects. That sounds like two stringed instruments to me, maybe two violins or a violin and a viola. Strings B low, no effects. Think that's a cello? Let's combine them together. So that sounds like a trio of strings, the cello, a viola, and a violin, or a cello and two violins. <laughs> I do think it's a viola. And that's different than the three violin sound of the Mark II, which is obviously three violins. But with the M300 strings, what I've noticed is they're a little more close mic, so the sounds are drier, and also they just sound a little more realistic than the traditional uh, strings on the Mark II or the M400. If nothing else, there's, they just are smoother, uh, particularly in the high end. The Mark II uh, three violins, it can be a little brittle in the high end, and I'm not hearing that with this. So... One more time, let me compare the strings B, uh, the layer of the B high and the B low, and um, then I'll compare that to the strings A high and low layered. So here's the strings B layered. Let me switch this to the A's. So now we have the layered string A high, string A low. So what I hear is, first of all, and the reason why I used the strings A in the last jam was the attack is a little softer. It's a little slower. Also, I'm not hearing the cello. I'm not really even hearing a, a viola. If it is, it's played higher, but that really just sounds like a combination of a bunch of violins. I'm sure there's a viola in there somewhere. All right, let me change this back to the strings B. We're going to keep these layered. I'll turn the effects on and let's walk through those. Uh, this is the basic effects setup that um, I've been using uh, in a number of jams, but there's there's some additions here. So the compressor, that's um, just to even out the sound. I'm not using it as a limiter. I just want to smooth out the sound softly, um, soft knee rather than, uh, you know, hitting a ceiling with the limiter and, and, and controlling the volume that way. So it raises the volume a little of the Mellotron and it also uh, just smooths out the sound. I've demonstrated compression a bunch of times, so let's just move on. I'm going to use a chorus sometimes. I'll turn that on. I'll turn that off. So uh, here's the compressor and the chorus from Mixbox. So the chorus is obviously adding a bit of modulation there, but it's also slightly widening the stereo field, given that the Mellotron is mono. Let me turn that off. Here's tape echo. I've used this before.
and you can hear that kind of classic tape echo in the tails. It, it just kind of gets a little modulated and um, the tone goes way down. I'm also using a plate reverb. Um, I'm actually, I'm really a big fan of plate reverb for everything. Uh, I've used it a lot on drums in, in past jams. And you just use the mix or if there's a size or the time to control the, uh, you know, whether it's a, a room-like reverb or a hall or even bigger. Um, plate Plate reverbs really uh, are good for, for big sounds, but there's just something about the plate reverb sound that, that I like. So here is the compressor on the plate reverb. All right. Didn't let that tail fade out before I turned it off. I'm also going to use a phaser. Um, you can kind of guess what this is modeled on just by the look. The only other effect I'm going to use here is uh, I got a channel strip. Uh, the main reason for the channel strip is once the soundscape is down, I need to raise the volume a little of the solo Mellotron sounds that I'm going to do over that. And um, just experimenting around the channel strip actually does good uh, for that. I uh, also have added a little bit of compression in there just to... It's very minimal, um, just to give another uh, way of controlling peaks if there's any. Uh, there's, a, they call it air here. It's really just a high, high frequency. I've added a little of that. It does make the sound breathe a little more, if if that makes sense. Let me, I'll just play a little with it, a little without, and you can hopefully hear the difference. <laughs> So does raise the volume, you can hear that, and just adds a little more on the high end. You're not really going to hear it. it, it in, in isolation, it starts to sound brittle like some of the other Mellotron string sounds. But once it's playing, uh, once I'm playing using that over the soundscape, it's, that part isn't noticeable. It just lets it cut through a little more. All right, why don't I, uh, let, let's just... Not add everything in, but there'll be portions where I'm using the tape echo and the plate reverb. So I'll do that and then I'll add in the phaser. So you can hear that classic phase sound. Let me turn that off. So that's kind of a step through of the Mellotron sounds that, and the effects that we'll be using. I'm also uh, using the Gauss Looper. I haven't used this in a long time, but I've got tons of videos where I, where I use this to make soundscapes. I, I love this app for a looper. There's one thing I don't like about it. Um, you can overdub, but when you want to stop recording, it, it just it adds a little like thump to the sound and I can't figure out a way <laughs> to not have that thump. So uh, I'm just gonna quickly build a very light layered soundscape here. What I do in the jam will, will have a lot more parts to it, but uh, more so I wanna just demonstrate how you can quickly create a soundscape, but also the frustration I have by turning the recording on and off. So let's just start here, I'm not even gonna worry about volumes. All right, so now um, I'll turn the I'll hit the record button on and off and you'll kind of hear the thumping I'm talking about. So there's got to be a way around it. I can't, haven't figured it out yet. If there's any other Gauss Looper uh, users out there that have experienced this and know a way around it, please let me know. The other thing I'm going to do is this has a sequencer built in, so um, you can then get some rhythmic effects. Hey, 
And you have a lot of different options here to control the sound, the filter. Probably won't use that today. Can have some delay. Really make it even more rhythmic. So I'm going to turn the volume down on that just to have it in the background and I'll turn the volume back up. I want to move on to Hammerhead. Um, this is a fairly recent app by Brambos, although it's based or ported from a, a, an old desktop app that uh, he created. Really just, uh, you know, your classic kind of rolling drum sounds and there's some effects built in. Let me just start up this rhythm patch that I have and then I'll, I'll uh, fade I'll fade Gauss back in and uh, you can hear what all that sounds like. And this is going through EOS 2. I'm just using a snare plate here, but you can hear kind of a wide sound. Anytime you're working with drums in isolation with reverb, the reverb always sounds much larger. Once you add other instruments in, the reverb starts to disappear. And I'll demonstrate that by raising the volume of the soundscape from the looper. Still have record on, so we'll hear the thump again. That one wasn't too bad. All right, let me close that. And then, just gonna do some stuff over it with the Mellotron. I'm gonna do some examples here. Uh, let's keep modulation off for now. We can turn it back to just the soundscape without the rhythm, the sequencer going, excuse me. Turn the delay down a little. Then I can add some modulation in here, turn the channel strip on because the soundscape volume is a lot louder now that I turn the sequencer off. And then another thing I like to do is um, slow it down. And actually this time, maybe I'll slow down the um, Mellotron as well. Let me try that out here. back up and then that just totally changes the mood of the soundscape and I could do some more Tron stuff over that let me use uh, the sound separately I'll start with the high and then I'll switch to the strings below So that's the basic uh, sounds, the basic structure. Let me uh, erase the current loop that I made and reset a few things uh, because I will be turning effects on and off differently in different parts of this jam. And then I'll come back and I'll do the improv.
The strings from the M300 sound more realistic to me than some of the other ones that are on the Mellotron. For example, the Mark II violins have a much more brittle high end. I used a bunch of different effects in Mixbox throughout the jam. Compression and a plate reverb were on the whole time, and the tape delay was on most of the time as well. And I switched back and forth between chorus and phaser uh, just to get some different modulations going. I built up a soundscape using the Gauss Looper and then turned the sequencer on to make it a more rhythmic effect. When that was going, I added in Brambos's Hammerhead for an electronic percussion line. And toward the end of the jam, I went to half speed on Gauss Looper. I like that you can change the speeds on the Looper because it completely transforms the mood of a soundscape that you might build with it. So I've been experimenting with different camera angles. Please let me know what you think and if you have a preference in the comments below. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and good luck with your own music.